Alan Taylor, little lady with a great challenge in front of her. This is Flo. Maybe Flo. <laughs> she wins the world championship. And the winner's circle for that cowgirl. Alan Taylor will win. You brought the new horse out of our champion, Flo. It's one of her babies for baby Flo. Loan to the Flo. Hush money. Hush money. Oh, the hush money. What's up, Flomies? Welcome back to my channel. Okay, we have some rodeos to hit, all sorts of fun stuff, but we're gonna do a little clean the trailer moment because it's so satisfying for us to watch. Like we, for hours, we'll watch people power wash rugs. So I don't know if you're like Cody and I, but we are gonna clean this trailer out and we're gonna let you be a part of it. It is completely trashed. Do I condone this type of behavior? No. Have we been really busy in the middle of moving? Absolutely. And the trailer is really small, so it just gets dirty. Um, but we never go to a race with a dirty trailer. A thousand reasons. We even get it like detailed or we do it ourselves because it just frees up bandwidth in your head to think about less things and think more about your performance. So back in the day, Martha Josie used to tell people in the 90s, like, check all your tack load your bit, load your shirt, double check everything the day before. And the reason that still holds true is because we as humans can only handle so much on our plate before we mentally crumble. So with as busy as everybody is these days and as much as we have going on, we always like to leave with the trailer absolutely perfect. That way if we show up late, uh, like we just recently did, we can rock and roll and go like that, not looking for anything. So we're gonna fill up water tanks, we are going to clean up, we're gonna wash our rodeo shirts, by the way, if you haven't gotten a hold of the Ranch Dress and Rodeo shirts, you should. New collections are coming all summer long, so be sure to go to ranchdress.com, use code Fallon to get a discount at checkout. The Rodeo shirts are machine washable. You don't have to starch those bad boys. You don't even have to hang them up. You can fold them and they'll look amazing. They pull over your head like a hoodie in case you're like a, um, a cowgirl that's just kind of like cowgirl light with how you do things. That's me. I'm gonna be in vans right up until I have to put on my cow cowboy boots. Um, so these rodeo shirts just speak my language. Make sure and check those out. All right, let's get to it. Let's start cleaning. It's an absolute nightmare in here. Ah! Okay, we'll start with rodeo shirts, leggings, things. I'm gonna just throw these outside on the ground. Yeah. Because concrete, yay. Okay. Okay. And then we have that new new. Oh, and more dirty clothes. Get all my trash in a pile. Also, isn't this cute? This was Velcroed on somewhere. I love that so much. Okay, trash. This is our mirror. It typically doesn't come off, but what happened is it got really, it, it texas and it was like 120 degrees in here and we didn't have the AC on. So, now we're back. Highly recommend. These are for our fans um, to stay charged. So we will have these bad boys here. And then we have the new tactical collection coming out. Um, this is not a new style, it's a restock that you guys have wanted for so long. So sports saddle people, you're gonna absolutely love this. People that typically have to shim their saddles, um, they're gonna love this too. And I picked up a Sarita one for the tack room. So and a regular one also, so we'll throw those in the tack room. Where are your boots? Muy importante. Um, in the back. Okay. Okay, we need to fill up the water. Hi, baby. Hi. Wow. I'm taking off the cover. Wow. Now I'm gonna go up. Replenish. I need this to go with my cuteness. One ear moment. Okay. Okay. I have to remember to grab my shirt. 
Yes. This is my saddle, right? So I need a different cinch. Do I not have her bit? Okay, the big breaking news is that we got the staff all worked out where Baby Flo is moved in. We aren't all the way moved in. Um, turn around, it looks like a used car lot here. It, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. So finally yesterday, I was able to move in Baby Flo and one other horse, um, but I'm super excited because this is the view that when I wake up and go to sleep, I can see that Baby Flo's okay. Regardless, I mean, we walk in here 94 times a day anyway, but she can also see up the hill, which means that when we build our house on the hill, she will be one of the main horses that I can see up there too. Like, I don't know that I'm not gonna build a stall for her that looks directly into my bedroom. I don't know that yet, so we'll stay tuned. But we also moved some more horses in Next one that moved in, Flo's Legally Blonde. Elle Woods herself got moved in. Also made a killer run in practice on her. She's only three years old, so I'm super excited. But that's the tour of who has moved in, of course, as more horses get finished. Currently, there's only two horses in this, eh, technically three, that are not Pro Rodeo winner or have placed at a Pro Rodeo, and that's Peace Pony and the two fraternity colts that have never been entered. So it's... I mean, it's a, it's a baddie roster. Not everybody, not everybody makes the roster, so we're excited. Um, that's it for the barn. Let me show you guys some runs. So first this week, we went to Fort Worth to the stockyards. If you've never been in our neck of the woods, going to the Fort Worth stockyards is super fun. Um, if I'm being super honest, it's my least favorite rodeo. I just haven't had a ton of success in there. And that mindset led me to this run that you're about to see. Worst run, not the worst run I've ever made on Hush Money, but I will say one of the worst runs I've made since she's been a rodeo winner and one of the top five in the WPRA tour, um, and simply rider error. So I want you to take a look at what I did wrong right here. Still going bad on your Okay, we got there really, really late at 10 p.m. We saddled, we had to skip a lot of the extras and go straight into the arena. When we got to the back of the alley, we looked up, the barrels, the barrels were set up and we played it cool, like that's exactly how we planned to arrive. Um, but inside we literally saddled in maybe two to three minutes. So that's another reason to have everything organized. We were not shaking and out of breath. We were just like, okay, if we make it, we make it. If we don't, we don't. And we got to the back and I didn't make a great run. It wasn't because of that. It's simply because I went to catch shape in kind of an antiquated way. Instead of riding my horse past the barrel and being really driven about it and having my eyes locked on, I simply was a little bit distracted. So um, I'm up at that rodeo again this week. So I'll make sure to show you guys footage of a hopefully improved run, but that was a bummer of a run. My leg is good, hush money's good. So now let's see if Cody can pick it up for the entire team. Here goes Cody and Mojo. Yeah, Cody. All right, yes, they hit barrels, but they, they had a very, very fast time. So when we go back to this rodeo, it's really encouraging because even Baby Flo just does okay in this arena. So I'm really excited. A lot of people compare it to Vegas. And fun fact, a lot of people go to prep for Vegas at the stockyards. And I've found that when I did that and when a lot of other people did that, it did not serve them well. So if you're going to the NFR later and you're a competitor, maybe just go there once or twice. Or if you qualify for the American semis, go there once or twice, but don't like set up shop and like put your mailbox up because you, you need to stay out of there. That place is like, I don't know that's haunted like Odessa, but there's something about it that I'm not like super huge fan. The only reason you can like really get me there is if you've promised me the sauerkraut soup at the steak place that's across the street. Unpopular opinion. Not everybody's gonna like that. Not everybody's jam. Next up, we're gonna go to Mesquite. We found out that we are like in the top five of this Mesquite Championship Series that we didn't even know existed. And when I showed up, I walked up and they were like, hey, by the way, you're winning the series. And Cody is only like a couple of points behind me. 
So then the pressure was on and that I love because that is where I thrive and I haven't been put in that situation in a couple of years. So very excited, but I just came off like the worst run I've ever had. So time for me to lock and load. Let's go. All right, that was better, 15.79. I'm super stoked, really, really, really happy. It wasn't Hush Money's best, it wasn't my best. It actually would have been Hush Money's best if I hadn't overrode her past the second, past the third, but I wanted to undo what I had done the night before because it simply wasn't her fault. And so me causing her to do that, making her look bad, wanted to be a little dramatic about getting past my second and third, and I knew I was winning the series, which bought me a little bit of room to be able to kind of fix some things and then come back even stronger. Now, the reason I wasn't on Hush Money is because I was giving Lolo a break, so she will be coming back next week, not for Hush Money's any fault of hers, but Lolo is thriving, so I wanna make sure I give her a shot to complete what she started and all those points that she won for me. So, now it's time for Cody and Mojo, who have always been in the hunt or in the money every single time they go down the alleyway at Mesquite. Let's see how they do. The 1535, Cody and Mojo bring home, home fourth place money with a gorgeous run. Could she have been even a 15-1 or a 15-2? Absolutely. Was she playing it a little bit safe and still gave him a whooping? Yes, she did. So I'm very, very proud of her, and we get to go to that rodeo this week too. So you guys, that was so much fun. But let me show you what we've been doing all the other times outside the arena because this move... This move though, it's a big one. I'm not saying it's been the hardest move. I'm just saying it's, there's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts, you know, businesses and babies and barrel races. Is that the three bear, it's like bears beats Battlestar Galactica. That's yes, the three beats. <laughs> My office fans know, my office fans know. Okay, so that's the tea. Take a look at this moving footage. So here's what I've learned about life and stuff and things. There's no point to make more money if you're not gonna spend it to make your life a little bit easier. I said what I said. So like if you're gonna work hard, don't just imposter syndrome yourself into not actually spending it. I'm speaking to me. <laughs> um, we hired a moving company and, <laughs> and it's funny because every time they have to read the notes as part of their customer service protocol and it says, I want this Kardashian style, I don't wanna lift a finger. And it's just really funny to hear them read it back to me. <laughs> I was like, you know, when Chloe walks into her new space and her, her cookies are all stacked and crap, and she's just like, this is my new house. And she shows her baby for the first time, like, look, we moved. And the baby's like, wow, there was no, like, drunk uncle over here that you're bribing with pizza to <laughs> help us load all this up? Like, that kid will never know that experience. Um, and I guess mine won't either. Whoa. Anyway, um... We are, we have plenty of manual labor pro projects that he will know, by the way, but um, we're moving out. We're moving out of Dallas. Um, we already bought our new place, so the deal is we had um, like a two month lease back on this house so that we could move our stuff into the other place. We had like a 90 day close on the other place, which took forever, but the people needed it, and it was just like a whole thing. Um, so this has been long and drawn out. I've been riding in the arena for weeks, and now we're gonna get to move into the house. Other thing is that we made some changes in the house. Um, so there's literally a painter in there right now and we ripped the floors up and put down floors and all sorts of stuff. So I don't even think that we're gonna be able to like move in, move in today or tomorrow. I think it's gonna look like a more over the weekend situation. <laughs> I also have three rodeos. I have a rodeo Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I have a rodeo Friday, Saturday, and Saturday. Friday, Saturday, and Saturday. So, uh-huh, yeah. At this point, we're less than an hour in. I'm feeding the baby in the truck. So, we're less than an hour in, and like this is why you hire movers, and 
Like we set aside part of the money that we made from this house to like pay for just the most ridiculous effortless, effortless move ever. That being said, we did torture the majority of our friends with a full 14 hour day of loading the superfluous goods to show the house into a cargo trailer. That's another story for another time. We'll have to unload that trailer and just gives me like complete anxiety just thinking about it. Um, but we hired this company to come do it so we didn't have to torture our friends again. And that's on, that's on loving your people <laughs> and them loving you back. Thank God. I have cried several times over Brand not being able to see his room or like remember it. And the fact that um, we have so many memories here. Yeah. And that I gave birth to Brand in this home. So I was a little emotional about that. But the life that we've created at the ranch already with our family is just like there's so much more fulfillment there. Like this house was a really big accomplishment for us because this is a style of house that we love. Um, this is really like we love super modern homes. We love, um, we love super clean things. It's not for everybody. Definitely not, definitely not everybody's style. I think a lot of people, um, equate a lot of stuff in a home. <clears throat> yeah. With, you know, there being, it being very homey. That's not necessarily our style and it, that feels homey to us. So I know it's not for everybody, but, um, we're super into this style home. So we're going to re, um, <laughs> Hey, we're going to rebuild this style of home on the ranch. It's just a little bit more of a ranch feel, but still a modern vibe. So excited about that. Excited about living in a really small space also to like super enjoy what we have. Like, very home edit, very Marie Kondo kind of vibes. Um, so really excited for that. Really excited for this chapter. Um, I don't know. We're just, we're super pumped and we're already making amazing memories. So I'll take you guys on the inside tour. Things I'm going to take with me myself. This bad boy and that bad boy. And going with us is this weird purple rain drawing the prince. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not a prince fan, but I'm not a prince fan like that. We wanted it a silent auction by accident. <laughs> So I guess that's going with us too. One upstairs. By the way, the industrial vacuum cleaner is where it's at. That's where it's at, right there. Like that, it's like a back to the future moment. Man, crazy. I had you right here, right here. Crazy, crazy, crazy. This is how to do it though. Look at these boxes. These giant hanger things. And then they'll just do their thing. They better not mess with my Vans collection. Okay, so, like I said, we paid a lot of people to come over and move us. And we just started hovering. We just began to hover. And so we decided to bring Bran to the zoo because it's like 10 minutes from our old house. We would just walk around and enjoy the fruits of our labor like we paid for it. Step away. Stop micromanaging. Proud of us. This is so crazy. Crazy. Hey, Tater, Tater. So Tater's the neighbor's dog, I guess, that comes over and he's normally here at night, but he's here for today. He's gonna help us. All right, Brand, well, let's go. So we're starting out with an empty house and an empty front. See how it goes. And in the mosh pit of all this is room getting painted. Like the upstairs, all this will be white. So that's happening simultaneously. So it's chaos. We have made a baby box out of our couch. <laughs> 
So as things are getting moved in, how are you feeling about the move? I'm not enjoying it at all. But it's better than normal move. Can we... Yeah, but now I'm stressed out because no, this is painted. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That would be tricky. And we gave the painter guy the day off to try to move. So. He should just keep going in that room. Yeah, but they're about to have to build the bed in there. So. Is everything out of it? Uh-huh. Okay, let's check upstairs now that we got a babysitter. halfway three quarters away mark everything's in here but not everything's unpacked that's gonna be all weekend I have a feeling but it's time for us to eat so I called in a favor into our favorite Mexican restaurant right up the road and boom all right you guys that's it for today we have so much action-packed stuff going on in the middle of this move which is still going on um, Cody and I have three rodeos in the next two days. So I'm excited for you guys to see the next vlog. Super pumped to show you our fraternity cults and how they're progressing and all the behind the scenes of Mega Ranch. So make sure you're subscribed, ding that notification bell. And as always, don't forget to count your blessings, drink your protein and say thank you to Jesus. See you next time.